We're here with their takes are Dom Chu, Dear Jabosa, and Bill Griffith. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Uh, first up today, this is quite the story. Yesterday we talked about iRobot. Today it's Align Technology. They're the maker of Invisalign, and they're tanking after the company's warning about a potential slowdown in China. They missed on second quarter estimates for shipments by citing uh, softness in China from a tough consumer environment and said they're taking a cautious approach for Q3. This is not so much a tariff story per se. Um, Sounds and, like it's just a consumer story in China, right? right. Or is I, it a story about com, you know competitive issues? That's what I might argue. Yeah. Is that it's say, not there just are other, in China. There are other, issue. other players who do this yeah. as well. There's Smile Direct. Yes. There's Candid. I just spoke to the Candid, founder of that yes, company I was recently. Just, these, I, I don't know if we have this made up. I'm seeing these ads all over the place yeah. now. <laughs> it's like a you know what would we call it? A Warby Parker for that's exactly what they called it. I think. <laughs> yeah, great minds there. Um, <laughs> there's so much competition. There's a lot of VC money in this space as well, and it's a little bit of a different model, right? The Warby Parker model where you pay hundred dollars, they ship you a box, you outfit it, and then they send you, you know, your teeth mold. Is that the total cost? Of hundred bucks? <laughs> no, that's oh. just up it's like, front. geez, I'm signing up tonight. But the total costs are still a lot lower than what it's like to go to the orthodontist, mm -hmm. right? They're the ones that have been really upset by this, but they work with Invisalign. So Invisalign, my understanding, is still for people who have like major issues, and these other ones, though, are for people who don't have huge issues but want to or lost their retainer that. 15 years ago. <laughs> no, and I, to I, do something what's about interesting? It. I was looking at a long-term chart of this company. I I went back 10 years. Now, for years, this was a sort of a sleepy, slow growth yep. kind of company. And two years ago, it took off. It absolutely took off, and it's been on this incredible roller coaster ride. I think it was the best performer in the NASDAQ a couple it's of a years. It's a brand ago. awareness thing, though, right? Because it wasn't until the last three years that people started to really become aware of this idea that you did not need massive orthodontic work, which I received when I was a kid. I remember my parents complaining all about the thousands they yes. were spending right. on putting braces on me retainers, headgear, and everything else. And now this idea that you could do it from a cost-effective yeah, standpoint didn't happen you until know a few what? years ago. My, my son, well, both my kids, well, only my son had the, uh, the, the braces when he was a kid. And then he got the Visalign even then, hmm. later, wow. years later. I mean, they're selling it both ways right now. That's Absolutely. interesting that you saw the stock take, stock take off two years ago because the Invisalign patent expired in yes. 2017, mm -hmm. right? right? And right. then you saw a lot of the competitors. So you have to wonder if maybe they had made a bigger push before then. Absolutely. And it's Good kind of like what place. we were just talking about yesterday. Is, it, is the Roomba struggle really... A China tariff problem, or is it unique to the Roomba and Align Technology? But I hear that is the new the new weather. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, I hear exactly. Jim Kramer has Mr. Visalign on tonight. That's exactly right. Jim is going to speak with the CEO of this company, Joseph Hogan, on Mad Money, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, and we'll see how he responds. Indeed. To all of these. I bet he's got very straight teeth. I know. <laughs> he better. <laughs> he's better, right? Yeah. Uh, next, AB InBev shares are on the rise today on better than expected earnings for Q2 and the highest volume growth. And more than five years, this parent company of, of Budweiser, the market share and their non-core business saw a big jump helped by, okay, now this is, we need to talk. <laughs> yes. We need to talk, America, about spiked seltzer. And that's why Frank Holland, come on over, oh, Frank. Oh, Frank. Our resident. With, um, with problems. Well, I'm not I would understanding. Never drop by without bringing drinks. <laughs> I would never do that. I'm not understanding the initial sort of eye rolling at the beginning. What am I missing? Because here? it's this generation's Zima, and those viewers out there know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what? Because I, I'm, I'm in my, I'm in my, you know, 40s, and I remember, you know, when Zima was a thing. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I have no idea what you're talking the about. Wine, right? like the, 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 the wine, right? It was, a, it was, it was a, it was. Think about it like the Crystal Pepsi of of malt liquor beverages, right? It was. Wow, like there's clear, a combination. So, yeah. <laughs> People used to mix it with like grenadine, that. that kind of thing. But so that was you know, when I was younger. So what do you have thing. here, Frank? Yeah. Well, here are three of the most popular brands. This right here, this is Capelon. This is actually Miller Coors offering. It's very popular this year. These other two, I got to look at them. This one is the Bon and Vive that she was just talking about. This over the last 12 months has seen double, triple digit growth. This one, White Claw, I think if you talk to anybody who's under 35, they know exactly what this is. This has been just really a booming hard seltzer. And it's similar to Zima, but Zima, a little bit different. It had a lot of sugar in it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Kelly's just laughing. You do. But this also, is kind of geared towards people who are more healthy. Truly is the other brand I see at the beach all the time. So here, here, here are some of the numbers to talk Boston. about. Yeah. The Bond and Viv is the Anheuser-Busch brand whose sales are hard seltzer sales are up 97% in the past one year. Diageo's uh, brand's up 123%. Miller Coors, which I guess does Henry's, up 172%. That's Boston Beer, which does we, truly, and I think my report later, 
stuff on up 183 percent. And Mark Anthony Brands, I don't know if that's related to the singer, is up 256. <laughs> are we are we allowed are we to, drink to drink these on these camera? Are cool. you, I was going to take a sip of yeah, one. Yeah, talking to producer it just brought one out. Right. I think it might be a bad terrible. idea for you. Yeah. Yes. So my question. Of course. Is this another fad? Like whatever, oh, you, I give, Zima, I give, whatever you just were talking about? I give about? this two years and we're going to be talking about something else. Beverage right? alcohol I mean, is cyclical. There's no doubt about it. There are ebbs and flows to this. How fickle is sure. the drinking public? But Don's think about actually how, right. Go we ahead. have to remember, excuse me, Kelly, but CBD infused drinks may be coming. I so that was hot. there's going to be another trend, of course. But Absolutely. right now, this is very hot. And people are enjoying it. Again, it's more for the health-conscious person, a few less calories, a little bit less sugar than other uh, non-beer drinks. But craft Looking beer has been slowing. Readings. And there is an opportunity for something else to step up into the marketplace. And it's, Frank, for now, it's Spike Seltzer. I don't know. It could have a several-years runway, trend, natural, whatever you want to call it. This is it. This Spike is it Seltzer, right which is essentially what? Soda water, vodka with a little bit of natural flavor. <laughs> what are you Watch saying? Your... You can make this at home? Is that what you're doing? Safe. I would never suggest Watch that. Watch your eight-year-olds around the yes. fridge who might not oh, be yeah. able to differentiate my between. My kid wants to drink my wife's Fisher's Island lemonade <laughs> yeah. and the Dell's, you know, spiked lemon drop, and so I'm, I'm watching. Uh, Frank, sure. thank you very, very Thanks, much. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for the you drinks. Yes. Are you guys going to hold on to these? Uh, I'm going to hold on to these. Yeah, I think so. Hard turn from that to the Boeing 737 MAX groundings. Southwest Airlines announced today that it is extending all MAX flight cancellations through the end of the year, and it's also ending its operations out of Newark as a result because that was underperforming and they need their existing planes elsewhere. Uh, the CEO, Gary Kelly, was on Squawk on the Street this morning. Great interview, voiced his frustration over the situation. Listen. We're unhappy that it's taken so long, and um, we're in the dark, on, just like you are, on a number of technical matters. Our flights are down from a year ago. Our customers aren't happy. Uh, our employees aren't as productive, so uh, we're muddling through. Muddling through, then thousands of flights and multiple carriers have been canceled as a result of these planes still being grounded. And the acting FAA administrator said just a little while ago that there's still no timeline for bringing the 737 MAX back. I just think it's unconscionable that they are not providing more guidance to their customers, the airlines so that they can have a better sense it of might not be because they can back. right because this is a regulatory issue that they are going to have to work with the faa so where's the, where's on the, i mean there's, uh, there's red where's tape the bottleneck? where's the bottleneck i mean it could be. boeing has and come up with a, the software fix already you so you hand that to the faa and they test it they were supposed to have those test flights well, months it ago it sounds to like see a, if it was going to be the fix the new issues that emerged I discovered understand. about a month ago have but, but reset you heard that doug timeline. parker and gary kelly said the same thing we're in the dark about all and that. that's not a good look when no. your biggest customer says we're in the dark right after you know a bunch of missteps when the whole thing happened right yeah. so and they were also trying to be as kind about it as they could if oh. Boeing weren't such a partner with all of these airlines, I think the pressure on them would be tremendous compared with what it is even now. Uh, finally, before we move on, just want to mention, we've been following that Samsung Fold story. Uh, it's back, the Galaxy Fold. Samsung says it has fixed the issues that affected the initial release and it'll now launch sometime in September. This is a $2,000 phone that was supposed to be the first with a foldable display, but we remember all those screen issues uh, that the tech reviewers found back in the day. It's only been a couple of months yeah. since then, guys. They say they fixed it. And it's still $2,000. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. You buy it first. Uh, no, you buy it first. No, no. I, I... No, no. You what buy about it testing it, guys? I will believe it when I see it. I mean, they didn't even get to that point last Todd time. Todd Hazelton had one here in our building. Yeah. And it broke. I mean, yeah, exactly. It broke. But it's, it's amazing with Samsung, right? It was not that long ago when they had the phone that was exploding. So right. it... Just how can this keep happening? But there is still a number market one. for this product. The people who want a larger screen but still want to be able to put it in their pocket. That dilemma still needs to be solved. And if they can get it right, I think uh, buyers but would forgive them. But is it a dilemma? I don't <laughs> find the need to have a massive screen that I can fold up into my pocket into but a, But plenty you know, of I wouldn't people mind do. <laughs> plenty we, of people yeah, do. And are willing to pay $2,000 for one? That's we, the question. We've hit peak gadget. <laughs> I, I think, you know, oh. all the innovations that the iPhone was coming up with over the years, we've that's leveled off. Now what they're trying to do is come up with a whole new display I, possibility, I actually, and I just think they're getting carried away I, right now. I disagree. I think that Samsung even putting it out there, I think I feel like this is the next big innovation. We haven't had something the truly foldable phone new. Is? Yeah, I think okay. it's a really interesting innovation. And, you know... It, other smartphone companies are taking their time with it. Yes, maybe that's a wise thing to do, but we're talking about it. We've been talking about it for months. Maybe Samsung will get it right this time around, and it'll be a big success. Rather, There's a reason they're the number one smartphone. Rather than folding, I'll wait for the one you can roll, roll up. Roll up. That's no. what I was thinking, too, like those old slap bracelets. Yeah, exactly. If I could just do something, get it in my pocket. There you go. Guys, thanks, and enjoy the seltzer. Dom Chu, <laughs> Deirdre Bosa. Maybe a little later. And Bill Griffin. Cheers.